This episode of In an Instant is powered by Wasabi. My God, it's full of stars. Oh, Neil Jr., I cannot believe we're out here and flying through the cosmos. Uh, I mean, me neither. I don't know how, how we did this. Yeah, I, I don't work massively underqualified uh, for this, but... I completely, completely. I mean, Daddy said I could do anything I wanted, though. Yeah, no, mine didn't, but... I mean, like, I don't even know what any of this... I have no does. idea what I mean, that what does. Oh, my God, Neil, please. Oh, God. Okay, all right, sorry. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. okay, we won't touch that again. Oh, that that, that one is not to touch. Not to Okay. Much. I did give us something. For the trip? No, you so, did not. Just a little something. You, um, you, you said something about me. getting some about bread. Yeah, I said we were gonna get this bread. Oh, okay. Yeah, I said we were gonna get have, this bread. I might have missed, okay. Well, I might have misunderstood. Eh, that's fine. Okay, no, okay, no, okay, no, okay. What you got there? <gasps> you did not sneak a loaf. <laughs> Absolutely. You did not this sneak loaf? a loaf. From your baby bakery, too. All right, well, I guess I have a little surprise myself. I, <laughs> yeah, I brought a stick. I brought a stick. <laughs> Hello, Neil and Buzz. Houston, Houston, what the heck? Two hours oh now. There's a problem! You were one species, but you behave like many. We gave you your chance, but you all acted like pieces of shit. Look, Neil Jr. Look, Fuzz. You know what to do now. Gosh, this is some abduction shit. I don't like this. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Welcome to In an Instant. My name is Ben, and today I am sitting here with... Matty Ice. And uh, our characters, Fuzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong Jr. have been abducted by aliens. And in lieu of that uh, dramatic event, um, we will be doing some creative shots on Polaroid to sort of simulate the abduction, do a couple scenes, and experiment with a few things. Possibly get that bread. We might get that bread. It's unconfirmed. Um, so the things we'll be doing today are something like light painting, uh, which we'll use with long exposures on the Polaroid Now Plus. We're gonna do multiple exposures. Uh, we're gonna use a lot of interesting and creative fun filters. Um, using filter holders on the SX70 and SLR680, and we may even do some emulsion lifts. Wow. Overall, we're gonna take the high concept of abduction and portray it as best we can with sort of surrealist imagery, and it's really fun to do that on Polaroid, and it's, it's gonna be tough. We're gonna try some methods that we're not really that comfortable with, so. You know, being uncomfortable is when you become the most comfortable. Whoa. Dude. The first creative mode that we are experimenting with today to simulate our abduction is some wacky filters to the SX-70 and the SLR-680. This adapter allows us to put Polaroid Spectra filters onto these cameras for something like this prism effect, some split diopters, and here we got a wide angle lens attached. That's gonna give us some real wild sort of 90s music video effects. We love to see it. We do love to see it. And you know, it's all in, it's all in service of uh, doing this alien abduction motif or storyline. Neil and Junior need our help. It's time to get space jammed. It's time to get space jammed, which sounds... Super 90s. Super 90s and mildly inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I am currently on the ground in this incredible helmet, and the filter that we are using is the split diopter. Um, traditionally, those kinds of filters were used to getting two things in focus that are on different planes of focus. So something that's deep in the background, something that's close in the foreground, and being able to get both of those things in focus. But in this case, it basically just, basically just makes everything blurry in one half of the frame. And so, we are using that to our advantage to create sort of a vortex effect uh, where like part of our bodies are getting sucked in to, uh, you know, what the aliens are sucking us into. The, the, the aliens are sucking us. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> Together we can 
explore the moon, we should go boldly where man has not gone before. My name is Neil Armstrong Jr. My name is Fuzz Aldrin. My dad is Neil Armstrong, some of you may know him. Um, and I was abducted by aliens. I definitely remember having some back pain that day. Um, I have this weird cluster of holes on my back. I mean, they put holes everywhere. <laughs> they put holes in places that they're not supposed to be holes, but um, it felt good. It's sort of hard to explain, but um, we went really fast though. They got like they got that light speed. It is crazy. I saw some crazy alien ladies up there. It was amazing. They also sort of sat me down. They sat me down and had me watch Frasier. You know the the show Frasier. Uh, they watched. They had me watch seasons one through seven, which uh, was actually great. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I love Frasier and I mean they were putting holes in me while I was watching Frasier but I don't but I, I almost didn't even feel the holes because I was laughing so much at Kelsey Grammer's acting. Light painting essentially involves keeping the shutter open on the camera for usually 30 seconds or longer and then taking a colored light or a white light and basically running it around your subject, running it around the frame, and letting that long exposure expose your light uh, in the various shapes that you make it. Uh, the challenging thing about this is we don't really know how long to keep the exposure open. All right, using manual mode on the app, our first attempt was a 30 second exposure. Now I'm just gonna switch it to bulb mode. So the exposure will stop when I stop it. Uh, we don't really know how strong our lights are and whether it'll overexpose something or underexpose something. We just did one experiment and it looks really cool, but as you can see in the sample, uh, the you know mat's not exposed properly. Uh, the light behind him looks really cool, but there's a lot more we can do with this. Um, so now that we know we have a sample to go from, we can adjust from here and get creative with it. Okay, so one of the things we're realizing just logically is that it doesn't really matter how long our exposure is, so we're just keeping it on bulb mode. What matters is how much light is hitting the subject because, you know, it's a long exposure anyway. The camera at F64 is not seeing anything when this light isn't on. Absolutely not. So it's basically like we don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. We just have to worry about having fun with our creative patterns and maybe not under or overexposing. It's 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 an experimentation. Yeah. We're, we're just gonna keep going. You're gonna try one? I'm gonna try one. I'm going to um, take our wonderful little light here and slowly rotate the um, the color around so that I get a huge different mix of colors, kind of almost like rainbowing and blending together. The thing I like is when the light overlaps. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what makes it cool, like the light being three-dimensional. Like, For sure. This one's really cool, yeah. but it's kind of like, Two we points. could have just had a red background almost. Oh my gosh, I mean. <laughs> they didn't have a pool, so that was disappointing first off. Um, yeah, there was no swimming pool. Um, that was a real, real downer. Um, you know, there was a, t a time I was flying so fast through space and time that my skin was rippling and it felt almost like I was in a swimming pool. I was like, ah, 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 ah. but it wasn't really a swimming pool. Uh, it was more of like a swimming pool of time. Oh, you want me to do it one more time? <laughs> Okay, so we just had uh, a lot of fun with light painting. Absolutely. Um, total learning experience, and I hope to improve, but I think we got a good foundation. Yeah. A good base understanding. Totally. So we're gonna take a lot of those same principles and do a couple multiple exposures. Um, so the similarities between that is that in a multiple exposure, especially with a black background like this, um, with, you know, if you're exposing, let's say, two people, whatever's black, whatever wasn't exposed to light in your first shot, is where you want to put stuff in the second shot. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so I want to do uh, a photo of Matt where we got like him centrally and then doing three faces looking in different directions. I mean, the aliens are going goofy there. Um, they're going absolutely, <laughs> they're going dummy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so. Um, nice to me, yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's what's good. That's, <laughs> that's your motivation. So um, we're gonna do sort of a shot with three faces like that. Do you have anything that you've thought of that you might wanna do or you just wanna feel it out? 
Um, no, nah, I just want to feel it out. I think something that could be cool is like doing, like, you know, holding the helmet yep. and taking that photo and then I'm putting you behind it or something. Oh, that's so an like, interesting idea. Your head is like in the helmet, but it's not in the helmet. Wow, that's a great idea. Um, Headless Horseman vibes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. yep. Um, um, all right, let's uh, solicit this biscuit and get that bread. All right, what are you doing up there? <laughs> Um, we are single-handedly creating a space void up here. And basically we're having Ben sit down so that he's like, like he's like going through like a wormhole and so like half his body is on one side of the frame, half his body is on the other side, um, but using the double exposure to be able to capture him in, in the frame at the same time. Oh man, the ladies, the space ladies. <laughs> I mean, sheesh, those ladies were just like something else about them. They just, they really understood me better than I understood myself. Um, and like really spent some really quality time with me getting over some, some problems I've been having for a long time. Um, but yeah, no, they're really, really kind, really, 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 you know, you know, sometimes you can look past the big head, you know? Big heads, sure, um, but they had a soft touch. Uh, th you know, they the moment I got there, they hugged me real tight. You know, so tight they put me in restraints, so tight, just locked me up. It was so cozy in there. Uh, I was in a little uh, cell that was not bigger than my body, really. Um, closed off, couldn't see any light. It was very, very scary. And I, uh, they didn't make me say this, but it was fun. I think it was just a joke. So I think it's their way of memeing, as we like to say around here. Now we are going to prepare a photo that was a near miss for us. We redid the shot and I think it came out a little better, but this one might be a good candidate for an emulsion lift. Um, usually I would like uh, something we're using for an emulsion lift to have much more white. Um, all of this will just be black in our lift but we still might be able to do something funky with it, and at the very least, we'll be walking through the process. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut it, um, basically just cutting the border off, and then we're gonna soak it in hot water, and what that will do is start separating the layers so that we can more easily brush the emulsion carefully off, and then transport it onto a completely different canvas. Okay, I've done it cleaner before, but hey, you know, we're just having fun out here. So here's our transparency. Uh, we got a little bit of uh, white spots on the bottom, um, but those will actually wash off. So this is now to be discarded. Uh, this is where we're trying to get the emulsion to separate off of the plastic front of the Polaroid. So we're gonna turn this over, and if you can see, it's already, mm -hmm. it's already sort of at the edges loosening up on that plastic. there, And we are released. So this is the clear plastic that's on the front of every Polaroid you take. And this is the actual chemical emulsion that is on the inside of it. At this point, one of the biggest challenges with emulsion lifts is getting this thing to sort of fan back out so that you can actually place it onto whatever surface you are planning to put it on. And in this case, because we are getting funky today, we are going to put it on a mirror. So here's a little square mirror that's almost the size of a Polaroid. Um, and we're gonna put this into the water and try to coax the emulsion onto the, onto the mirror. Because every time the water sort of jiggles, the entire, th there we go. About, I think, as good as we're gonna get here. And there we are. We've got a reflective Polaroid that, uh, if you hold it in front of the light, super shiny, really cool. Just like you saw in the how-to video. <laughs> I watched. <laughs> so, what we're doing is we're taking our little guy here, the Polaroid Go, and we're going to, um, or we have captured a full pack of images, but like mosaic titled, and kind of like not really thinking too hard about it. I was just kind of shooting compositions that looked interesting. Um, and now we're gonna try to like 
place them all together to maybe kind of rebuild Ben's body. Kind of separate, pixelated his body in the alien spaceship. Cool, so now we have the eight photos of Benny bags over here and we're gonna kind of lay them out. Now we're really getting into it. Ben kind of gave oh, me- Oh wow, this is cool. Ben kind of gave me the suggestion of slicing them up. So I feel like we can kind of use everything we want here. Um, and even like, you know. So this just, was our alien dissection. Yeah, alien dissection. They took you into multiple pieces. Yeah. They turned you into whatever they wanted. So you kind of get these interesting moments where you can do things like that and kind of like break apart what are, we're used to seeing when it comes to like your legs and stuff. Like. Oh man, I would love to be abducted again. The only issue with it was that I didn't really get to experience it with my good friend Neil Jr. Uh, they separated us, uh, possibly because if we were together, we would have been, <laughs> we would have just been a couple of jackals in the desert. <laughs> and they just wouldn't have lost control of us. So they had to separate us, um, complete isolation for what felt like an eternity because time was sort of, un, you know, I couldn't quite grasp it. Um, so I miss Neil Jr. a lot, but if I were to go back, I would have hoped we would hang out and watch Frasier together. All right, so uh, Neil and Fuzz had a very, very adventurous time in their abduction. And Absolutely. Frankly, it seems they almost loved it. Yeah. But I mean, it sounds pretty great. It, sound, it sounded real nice. Yeah. Um, and we also had a pretty great experience doing all these little creative shooting modes and uh, methods. Uh, so the first thing we did obviously was try this light painting. Um, I think in reflecting on it, uh, we had a little bit of trouble with our exposure times and trying to expose the subject, but also paint around the subject. Um, I think, you know, something I would have liked to have done more maybe is use normal lighting like just a normal yeah. balanced light to light the subject, which we never really did except on this one that had multicolor. I think you accidentally did that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks cool. Like I think we, we could have done more of that and uh, maybe we will next time. Yeah. No, I think, and I think like the consistent, is like going in knowing like what direction you want stuff to go as well. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. And like what kind of light you're using. Like if you're using like a single source LED or is it like the multiple LED, like an LED panel or um, or like a phone screen. Like I think all of those like change the way that the light comes through. Oh, and absolutely. Like, and the size of the source. What it looks like, yeah. Because the wand had a very different, more sweeping, spaced out look. Uh, than the individual little yeah. LED light that we were using. Um, so. so I think I, I had a great time with that. I really yeah. want to do more of this. I think in the future I would probably not shoot at F64. I think F32 would have been better. Yeah, probably yeah. easier for us to do. Yeah, it just, it took a lot. Some of these exposures were, you know, multi-minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were trying our best. Uh, we stayed in the that color space and we proceeded on to doing our multiple exposures, which I think came out really interesting. Um, what did you think? You, you were trying to put my head inside this helmet and- Yeah, no, I think it, it, it almost worked on this guy. I think like, we were like so close to fitting your head inside the helmet, which would have been incredible if we yeah. could have made it happen. Um, but it's pretty much in there. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think it actually worked pretty well. I'm not a, usually a big multiple exposure guy, so um, yeah. I'm not used to kind of that uh, that process. It was so. it was really interesting. I, I, I this is my shot of um, uh, we changed the color of the LED and moved Matt slightly backwards, and the way this looks, I just for sure looks so sick. And at this point, we were able to meter. Whereas with light painting, we were guessing. So once we were able to meter, we were getting like really sharp results. Yeah. Um, because you know we weren't we weren't using really long shutter speeds. Uh, so these and shots came out really nice. And even I think our double exposure astronaut like falling through space. Like once it came in a lot more. Once you had given yeah. like that Polaroid its full Polaroid time that it would like yeah. it likes to have. I think it came in kind of well. It does kind of look like you're. Yeah. Multiple, you're like doing the, I don't know. That I think is one of the coolest compositions. Like it, it might be underexposed, but like you can see what it is. Yeah. And I think the concept is so cool. Yeah. And it it's amazing. Like, we were shooting on the friggin' floor. cloth on the floor. Yeah. And it really does look like floating is happening. 100%. And you know, I'm sure we'll be back for more in the future and I think we, we should try this again and do more of this. Yeah, definitely. Because I really thought that was great. Yeah. Okay, and then we uh, we got kind of zany with our filters. Uh, these, I think we had some great results on. 
Um, really interesting with the split diopter, I think we got some of our best results, which are right here. Yeah. I mean, those shots are absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, they very much have like the sucked into the void, you're breaking time space, yeah. wormhole. Which is exactly um, what we wanted to accomplish today. Yeah. And I feel like that is the time where we nailed it. Yeah, totally. And we had a lot of misses. I mean, let's not be like, you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. We did make a lot of mistakes today, yeah. but that's how we learned. Obviously, totally. this is an expensive series of mistakes to make. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had, you know, when I, when I say mistakes, we underexposed some shots. Um, we didn't have many mistakes with framing, but we were having trouble with some of our exposure because we were really experimenting a lot with our lighting. And uh, so there were some hits and some misses, but I think our hits were great. One of our misses was you trying to reach for the bread. Yeah, the, the <laughs> wide angle. I think the wide angle was one I was like the most, not disappointed by because we've gotten good results with it before. Yeah, I mean, this one was sick. Yeah, this one's amazing. Um, and I think it's just like, you gotta know where the right places are for like that wide of a lens. Yeah. Like shooting a backdrop or in studio, gonna be pretty, Impossible. It was period. very, very hard to do that on the backdrop because yeah. it, basically any point you're standing, the lens is so wide that it's seeing beyond the backdrop. Yes, so 100%. When we did it out in the hallway for a second, you know, it came out perfectly because we, we weren't worried about the constraints. No. And you can focus so close, it, it really came out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that like overall, like this is like a really fun, these are fun ways to like maybe just get your brain moving in a different absolutely, direction. Absolutely, absolutely. I think the Polaroid Now Plus in particular is underrated because it has all those modes built into it. Yeah. And so the fact that we could just like fire this off, we're doing tons of stuff on the app, that was really cool. Yeah. You know, that, that being said, I love the stuff we got on the uh, SLR 680 because yeah. you know, if you, you get the sharpness, you can focus much closer. I think and it's the most, and it was the most consistent. In, it was, in the yeah, like we kind of was... knew what we were getting. Yeah, yeah, that. 100%. Um, and we accidentally took a couple shots on this expired 780 turbo film, which was still on the camera, which I did not realize there were any shots left. <laughs> and that was so sick to be able to get those on Yeah, yeah. I think that's what makes this wide angle one so interesting yeah. is because it just has like such a, it's got that sun seer, yes, like, yeah. especially because there's this, this like perfect little flare right on the, yeah, the yeah, helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Oops, it I just cussed. But I love that shot, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and then the last thing we did, we, we both sort of took on a different creative challenge. And, uh, well, why don't we do yours first? Because, uh, I, I will, actually, I want to end with yours because yeah. it's, I think, extremely cool. Um, and we talked enough about this emulsion lift, so we don't need to get too far into it. But um, I thought this was a great use of a dudded shot. Yeah. Uh, that I think, you know, it's very abstract in its current form, but I don't know, I'm, I'm really happy with it. You know, we, you, you have to take some time with these and, and it takes a lot of patience and I've done a bunch of emulsion lifts in the past. I haven't done any on the channel because they take so long. It's not really great video, but. Yeah, um, I think that what's cool about emulsion lifts are emulsion lifts in theory take a long time, but super simple yeah. to do. Yeah. Like as long as you're just like patient and you take the time to do it. And I think that they're really cool because, um, you know, you can take shots that you may not be like super happy with and like maybe give them another life or yeah. um, while you're doing these experiments, just like not worry, knowing that like maybe you can do something with it in the yeah, future. Yeah, exactly. Like when this shot kind of bummed out a little bit, I was like, ah, oh, damn, like it would have been nice if we nailed this. But I really like the way it looks now. So, you know, that's the beauty of of this really, really, really analog medium where you can literally deconstruct it. Speaking yeah. of deconstructing, um, <laughs> this was, I think, one of the coolest things that, and it was one of the last things we did today, yeah. um, which is your Polaroid Go Mosaic. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like Photoshop in real life. Um, yeah. And it was funny, it was like, I always, when I like went to school for design and stuff, we like always like did everything super physical and like you just don't do it that much anymore. Um, right. So it's super cool to like, actually take all these photos and like I said, not really think it, like think about it, but not think about it too much, knowing that you're just gonna like slice them up and kind of make something new in the end. Exactly. Um, and when you started going in with the scissor, that was... Yeah, the scissors changed the whole way. Like I was like, uh, okay, it was kind of cool when you first did it, but I wasn't like, I was like, oh, that was a little disappointing with the outcome. But then once you start cutting it up and you just start like freewheeling a pair of scissors, like everyone knows what happens. It's just... Fun. It gets it gets funky. It gets funky. Which is exactly what we were trying to do. And and we were uncomfortable. And now I'm comfortable. I'm extremely because I feel like I did something new that I'm like super excited about, and I would love to do again. Yeah, I mean, look, if you could take anything away from this video, it's that challenging yourself and trying methods that you're completely unfamiliar with uh, can really put you into a different headspace. I had so much fun trying this stuff because it's really not something I would normally do. 
Um, I think I'm a little bit more straightforward um, in a lot of my photography. So I, I had a great time doing something that was just like wild. 100%. And I think like what you like, well, you can't forget too is that like, yeah, sure, like we have like original uh, spectra filters and right, right. all these things, but like, doesn't stop you from going to get like a normal, you know, smaller threaded modern camera yeah. filter. And then holding just it in front of the lens. Holding it in front of the lens. Yeah, and you, you, know, it to you the can camera. do an emulsion lift with a bowl of hot water. You know, you can get creative with anything you have at home really already. So, um, well, I really hope you enjoyed watching Neil and Fuzz back at it, back on their BS abductees that absolutely still have more story to tell. Those boys do not know how to stop. They don't. Going and crazy. drop a comment below if you want to see more of those sweet, sweet space boys because it's getting a little lunar in here. And I think we just sort of vibe on this theme a little bit. Maybe we go to Mars next. Maybe we go to Mars next. Mars needs Neil and Fuzz, that's my thought. Thank you for watching In An Instant. Uh, check out the Patreon. The Patreon is what is supporting videos like this that are a little bit pricier to make. So thank you just so much for all the patrons for donating. Obviously, go ahead and do something real different to that subscribe button. Get real creative with that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more shoots, reviews, breakdowns, and all things instant. Ah, bye. Space off. Space. What did you say? Space off? <laughs> Space off. Launch. Space off. <laughs> Launch. Blast off. <laughs> Neil Jr. I don't like this Neil Jr. Where are you, little Neil Jr.? It's really dark in here. Oh, this is definitely a. Oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Mic check, mic check, one, two. I did not do it. I did not hit her. I did not.